Hello everybody and welcome to online study for you. So this is a video on the Accenture MCQ programming questions and in this video we will cover some of the questions that will be asked in the Accenture drive. So in the previous video we have covered the programming question. So Accenture basically has two parts in its programming related questions. The first one is uh, obviously the MCQ questions in which you will be asked an MCQ question which four of the options and these questions will come uh, from C, C++ operating system and databases backgrounds and there is a programming question in which you have to solve some programs I think one to three depending upon uh, what the standard is and we have covered the programming question in a previous video we will be coming up with more but in this specific video we will be covering about the MCQ questions so let us get uh, right into it we will solve five questions here varying from Java to operating systems and as well as database systems so let's go for the first question the first question reads as in Java the documentation comment starts and ends with what so the, here are the options option A is uh, slash star and star slash option B is star slash slash and star star slash option C is slash star and star slash option D is slash star star and star slash so it is definitely not option A because it has uh, the slash star common so this is not the one and option B is not also the right option because star slash slash is not at all a comment so the answer must lie within option C to D if you think C is right you are wrong because C is actually a comment and option D is the right answer the reason is that a normal Java comment starts with slash star and it ends with sla star slash so this is a multi-line comment this is a multi-line comment but when it comes to documentation so what is a documentation if you have created projects uh, with Java in some of the standard editors like NetBeans or Eclipse you will see some documentation that starts with this and ends with this so this documentation will be something like the license that is given to the code or maybe the date and time when this project was created and uh, some information related to the author of this program etc is given in here so option D star uh, sorry slash star star and star slash is the right answer for documentation purposes in Java let us go for the second question which reads as let a be a square matrix of size n consider the following program what is the expected output so this is the code and these are the options let us read the code first and then go for the options the code reads as c is equal to 100 for i is equal to 1 to n do for j is equal to 1 to n do open the bracket temp is equal to a of i j plus c a of i j is equal to a of j i a of j i is equal to temp minus c and then you have again the same for loop which prints the matrix so what will be printed after executing this option a the matrix a itself option b none of this option c adding 100 to the upper diagonal elements and subtracting 100 from the diagonal elements of a in option D transpose of matrix A now let us get rid of this uh, options and then analyze for ourselves as to what is happening here now let us take a matrix for example I'll take something like Phi uh, here I'll take 2 here I will take again let us say 8 and here I'll take say 6 so this is a 2 by 2 matrix this specifically asked for n by n matrix so this is a 2 by 2 matrix so if I take the 0 0 0 1 this is uh, sorry this is 1 0 this is 1 1 okay let me erase this so now let us check what happens now let us apply the following code the algorithm that is given here for this code now so initially I have C is equal to 100 
and then I have a for loop which reads through this so in the first loop I have obviously my C will be equal to 100 initially I have temp is equal to a of ij so for this loop a of ij is 0 comma 0 so this is i and this is j a of ij so what is a of 0 comma 0 is 5 plus c that is 100 so 105 will be stored in the temp variable okay let us change the color and now let us calculate a of ij so a of i is 0 j is 0 is equal to a of j i so a of j i is nothing but a of 0 0 because j is also 0 i is also 0 that is nothing but phi so this phi is written here again so there is no change in the element a of 0 0 now let us come to the next line in the next line again my c is obviously equal to 100 because it has never been changed my i comma j value has now been changed to 0 comma 1 so my temp will have a of ij plus c so a of ij is a of 0 comma 1 a of 0 comma 1 plus 100 that is nothing but a of 0 1 is 2 plus 100 that is nothing but 102 now if i look back at now the next statement is a of ij that is a of 0 1 that is this element is equal to a of j i a of j i is 1 comma 0 so a of j i of 1 comma 0 is 8 so this number 2 actually becomes 8 okay let us modify this and write that 8 in here so my 8 comes in here so now if you think this is transpose of a matrix hold on let us go further and see if it is true or not fully and a of j i that is a of 1 comma 0 becomes temp minus c what is temp 102 minus what is c 100 that is nothing but 2 that is a of 1 comma 0 now becomes 2 so many of you think that this is a transpose of a matrix but you should not make that mistake but hold on until the next statement so now we have this 2 and h that is exchanged here comes the real plot twist let us uh, change the values of this temp again let us erase these statements and go for the next cycle of the for loop that is being followed here okay let us change these i and j values so i'm picking my color so the next i and j is 1 comma 0 so my i is this my j is this so my temp is again a of ij that is a of 1 comma 2 that is 2 plus 100 that is 102 now here is the twist a of ij that is a of 1 comma 0 is nothing but a of j comma i that is a of j comma i is 0 comma 1 a of 0 comma 1 is 8 so now what happens here is your 2 gets erased and again gets replaced by 8 which was the original matrix remember again a of j i a of j i is nothing but a of 0 comma 1 is equal to temp minus c what is temp 102 minus c is 100 that is nothing but 2 what is a of j a of 0 comma 1 so this gets replaced by 2 so this reproduces the original matrix itself and not the different matrix so if you go for one one and one the next element it will be the same because for zero and zero the element did not change as we see here for six also the element does not change it remains six so the original matrix itself is returned at the end so that is why we can say that the answer for this question 
is option A, the matrix itself is returned for you and not anything else. So this looks like it is doing a transpose of the matrix but it does not and returns the original matrix. Let us go for the third question which reads as which of the file format supports in Windows 7. The options are BSD, all of these NTFS and EXT. So BSD to give you a quick background this BSD is a Linux file format system. Uh, so this BSD was created by this operating system called as FreeBSD which suggests by his name there was a free operating system targeted towards scientific computing and such things so this uh, Linux this version of Linux for file formatting system uses this file format uh, NTFS system is the new technology file format the new technology file system this was created by Microsoft for its Windows file formatting systems so EXT is nothing but the uh, extended file format or extensive file format which was again uh, by the uh, this is called as extended EXT -E -N -D -E -D, extended file system so this was again created by one of the operating system called as Minix file system which is again a derivative of Linux or you can also say Unix oh uh, this was specifically for it and uh, you can guess the answer now by itself because NTFS was made by Microsoft and Windows 7 is another byproduct of Microsoft and that is why option C NTFS is the right answer because it Windows 7 only supports NTFS and all these are outdated operating systems even though Ubuntu and other Linux uh, operating system supports this so option C Windows 7 supports NTFS is the right answer let us go for the fourth question which reads as what type of a statement is this so this is the given statement and these are the options so to get not confused with it, let us change a color so it reads as insert into instructor so instructor is the table name here for us let us be clear on that values so 10211 Smith biology 66000 these are the fields so what type of a statement is this option a query option b dml option c relational option c ddl so now if you have a sufficient knowledge about um, database management systems and relational algebra uh, relational calculus or relational database management systems uh, you will know that there is no such thing uh, this is also my SQL, SQL command so there is no such thing as a query statement so this is a query in general but there is it is not a type of query so the relational is also not a type of query so DML in here stands for data manipulation language so data manipulation language and DDL stands for data definition language now if uh, you can make out right by the definitions the DDL is used for defining the data so for example create table so this is a data definition language because it is defining how a database looks like so insert is actually manipulating the data by inserting it so insert is actually a data manipulation language and option a dml is the right answer because insert into instructor so instructor is a table and this insert command is manipulating this table and inserting some values into it so option b dml is the right answer let us go for the last question of this video that is updates that violate dash are not allowed in dbms the options are option a integrity constraints option b transaction control 
option C authorization and option D DDL constraints now if you have uh, read about uh, database management systems you will know that the answer is option A because integrity constraints are one of the main constraints that are imposed on a database system table so what are in integrity constraints is uh, say for example what integrity constraints are the constraints are nothing but uh, some of the restrictions or uh, some of the rules that are binding those tables and integrity uh, is defined in some terms say for example if it is a primary key uh, the integrity constraint for this would be to be not null okay and uh, another integrity constraint for this is to be not duplicate or let us say unique so if you are inserting any other values uh, uh, so and if these values are actually you know uh, breaking these restrictions or rules that are imposed on it that statement will not be allowed to be executed in a database management system for example my SQL so if it is a primary key so you are inserting a new value new set of values as we did in the previous one so let us say a roll number is the primary key for a student database and this student roll number will not be allowed to be changed let us say I have a student whose roll number is 124 or something like that and if you want to modify this roll number and make it null if you update it and say it is null it will not be accepted because that violates the integrity constraint of that table so transaction control authorization uh, you cannot change it using a uh, update so for that you need a special command ddl constraint data definition language you cannot change any ddl constraints by updates because it updates fall under dml commands so that is why option a integrity constraints is the right answer for this question so we have come to the end of this video uh, thank you for watching for more content like this do follow us